Ladies and gentlemen, I was most touched to have been asked to contribute a few thoughts at the opening of your International Biodynamic Conference. And uh, all the more so when I learned that your theme this year is soil, an issue about which I care very much indeed. Now, it hardly needs me to tell a conference of biodynamic farmers that the way in which we manage farmland in general, and our soils in particular, is of central importance to ensuring the future ecological health of our planet. Indeed, uh, Rudolf Steiner was one of the first people in the modern era to recognize explicitly the principles of interconnectedness in relation to farming and to describe the links between the fertility of the soil and the health of plants, animals and people. It is truly remarkable that so many of the farming principles and practices highlighted in Steiner's 1924 agricultural lectures are still so pertinent today. If only the visionary advice he gave had been more widely recognized and adopted, perhaps much of the damage that intensive farming has inflicted on our long-suffering planet, uh, the degradation of soils, the decimation of the biodiversity which once coexisted with and actually assisted food production, and the diminished health and vitality of our food could have been prevented. Instead, it has taken up till, until now for people finally to realize that we have engineered a mammoth crisis in terms of loss of soil fertility. Of course, viewing things in the way Steiner articulated was not new, even in 1924. Those same powerful interconnections were known to many ancient civilizations, but somehow this wisdom was abandoned during the age of reduction of scientific thinking, which still persists so strongly. Now, I can't help believing that uh, at a deeper level, many farmers still have an intuitive, underlying understanding of those connections and know in their heart of hearts that agrochemicals and monocultures are doing long-term harm. In an ideal world, they would much prefer to care for the land in their charge in ways that would maintain and improve it through adopting a more holistic approach. The problem they face is that the prevailing economic system fails to put a price on the benefits of such approaches, leaving the majority of farmers trapped on a, on a treadmill of intensive production with little choice but to produce food whose apparent cheapness fails to reflect the true costs of its production. The question, of course, is uh, whether anything can be done to change this situation. Well, fortunately for us, nature is remarkably resilient, and there is no doubt in my mind that the natural capital which has been lost during the chapter of intensive farming could be rebuilt, if only there was a fundamental change of approach. So you can perhaps imagine my delight when at the COP21 gathering in Paris uh, last year, I learnt of the launch of French agriculture minister Stéphane Le Foll's Quatre pour Mille, or Four Per Thousand initiative. The uh, calculation that underpins this initiative and provides its name is that if the quantity of carbon contained in soils could be increased by just 0.4% per year, the annual increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere could be halted. The same measures would, of course, also improve soil fertility, one of the main reasons I converted to an organic system over 30 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, I've spent many years and a good deal of breath extolling the benefits of working with nature, harnessing positive forces through healthy soil, healthy crops, and healthy animals to provide healthy food for people. So it will not surprise you, perhaps, to know that this seems to me to be a hugely important and timely initiative. Only time will tell how far this gets, but when I hosted an international meeting on climate-friendly landscapes in London recently, 
we heard that 180 governments have already signed up and further progress is expected as a result of last week's COP22 gathering. Of course, we are still a long way away from a future where the most essential role of farmers will be to act as carbon stewards, rotating their crops with fertility building grass and clover pastures grazed by livestock, which Rudolf Steiner referred to as the soul of a landscape. But we are certainly closer than we were. Ladies and gentlemen, this comes with my warmest good wishes for a most successful meeting and uh, my fervent hope that you can make progress in this most pressing of tasks, rebuilding the health and vitality of our soils and making our future food systems more sustainable.